Shalom and welcome to Parasha Espresso, your weekly fix for spiritual lessons taken from the Parasha. Grab your coffee and let's take a look at the weekly Torah reading. This week we'll be looking at Parasha Toldot, which runs from Genesis chapter 25 verse 19 to chapter 28 verse 9. Enjoy it and don't forget to give us your feedback on Facebook, Twitter or via our website. Having children isn't easy. Just ask my wife. Raising them isn't any easier. They don't come with an IKEA manual of how to raise them, nor are they able to care for themselves. They aren't like robots that you can program or predict. They are more like agents of chaos leaving destruction in their wake. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little. And of course, we all love our children and they brighten our lives in ways we couldn't possibly imagine. But raising them definitely isn't easy. It's especially not easy to raise more than one, and sometimes it's not even easy for the kids themselves to have siblings. Any one of us who grew up with brothers or sisters knows what it feels like to have our toys stolen by a vindictive older brother, or our clothes purloined by a jealous younger sister. Having siblings to share life with can be a magical experience, and yet more often than not, due to favoritism and bad parenting, brothers and sisters can end up bitter rivals instead of loving allies. That was definitely the case for Isaac and Rebecca. Since we left them last week, they seem to have been having a happy marriage. In fact, things seem to be going very well because Rebecca is pregnant. But all is not as it seems. The baby doesn't seem to be behaving as it should be, mostly because it's not a baby, it's two babies. God explains to her that she's got twins and their future rivalry will make Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield look like best friends. True to the prediction, the babies come out of the womb fighting, with Jacob coming a close second, clutching Esau's heel. So the kids grow up and the rivalry continues. Jacob doesn't have to try too hard to trick Esau into selling him his birthright, which was essentially a double portion of the inheritance. And finally, as Isaac is on the brink of death, Jacob tricks his older brother and steals his blessing, with the help of his mother. No big deal, you may think. After all, it's only words, right? Wrong. These words are a prediction that are subsequently fulfilled. Jacob, the second born, the underdog, has come out on top and will rule over his brother. Esau is understandably devastated at his brother's cunningness and his own stupidity and makes a plan to kill Jacob. We leave the parasha with Rebecca sending her favorite son, Jacob, away to find a wife among her extended family. The story of Esau and Jacob is a sad story. It's a story of hate instead of love, of selfishness instead of selflessness, of bad parenting and favoritism. And yet it's our story. You see, we're all a bit like Jacob and Esau, whether we have siblings or not. There's a part of us that is arrogant and complacent like Esau, who was willing to give away the thing that should have been most important to him in exchange for a bowl of soup. And there's also a part of us like Jacob who steals, cheats, and connives to get what we want. The story of Jacob and Esau is tragic because of what it could have been, a story of love and harmony. Our story is equally tragic because of what it could have been. God offered us the chance to live with him in a perfect world, in perfect harmony with him, but we chose to do our own thing, and we've been stuck with the consequences ever since. Sure, we got what we wanted, but what good did it do us? Jacob ends up running for his life, and so do we, running in the wrong direction, away from our father, God. And yet the story doesn't end there. Later on, Jacob reconciles with his brother Esau, and Esau forgives Jacob. God also promises to forgive us and to reconcile us to himself if we are willing to turn from our wrong attitudes, thoughts, words, and actions. He promises to forgive us because our brother, Yeshua the Messiah, already suffered in our place. He wasn't interested in being our rival. He wanted to be our rescuer. Through him, we can experience a fundamental change in our lives where we can have peace with God and ultimately peace with others, even with our worst enemies and bitterest rivals. Why? Because forgiveness is stronger than hate. We all come from different backgrounds and stories. You might love your sister or hate your brother. You might have been the favorite child or the one who never experienced genuine love. 
Whatever the case, come to a Father who has always loved you and is just waiting to welcome you back, to forgive you and change your life for the good. What's stopping you? That's it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed our Parasha Espresso. Please don't forget to subscribe to make sure you get the latest episodes. We'd love to hear from you, so please get in touch with us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or via our website at youdenfearjesus.de.